Harold Edward Elliot was born on the 19th of June, 1878, in Victoria. He joined the militia while studying as a lawyer at the University of Melbourne. In 1900, Elliot postponed his studies to serve in the Boer War as part of the 4th Victorian Imperial Contingent, where he received the Distinguished Conduct Medal. World War I had begun and Elliot was recognised as a natural leader and was granted command of the 7th Battalion of the Australian Imperial Force. It was the troops of the 7th Battalion who bequeathed Elliot with the nickname Pompey, inspired by Carlton football player Fred Pompey Elliot. The nickname, of which Elliot was not fond, stuck with him throughout his career in the AIF. Elliot fought valiantly at the Gallipoli Landing, April 25, 1915, sustaining an injury to his foot, temporarily relieving him from duty. He returned to lead his battalion at Lone Pine, 8th of August 1915, where his troops held off the Turkish advance. Four out of seven Victorian crosses awarded at Lone Pine were presented to Elliot's men. It was the Battle of Fromelles that, for me, set Elliot, now Brigadier General, apart from the other commanders. The military tactic at Fromelles aimed to divert German soldiers away from the Somme. Elliot fought against this strategy, believing that the loss of life would be too costly. This act of defiance against his superiors to protect his men was at the expense of his career and was believed by Elliot to be the reason for denied promotion. Elliot's concerns were disregarded, and the attack went ahead. 5,533 Australians from the 2nd Division were killed, along with 1,547 soldiers from the 61st British Division, while the Germans lost just over 1,000 men. This massacre took just over 14 hours and was the highest fatality rate in 24 hours of World War I. Arthur Baisley, assistant to Charles Bean, stated, No one who was present will ever forget the picture of him, Elliot the tears streaming down his face as he shook hands with the returning survivors. A mutual respect formed between Elliot and the battalions that he led. His connection with the men made him an extraordinary leader. In a letter to his wife, Elliot wrote, I can order them to take on the most hopeless-looking jobs and they will throw their hearts and souls, not to speak of their lives and bodies, into the job without thought. You must pray more than ever that I shall be worthy of this trust, Katie, and have the wisdom and courage given to me worthy of this job. Although he had a quick temper, Elliot was strong of character, humble, and always gave full credit to his subordinates. Elliot believed in fighting alongside his men and leading by example. His refusal to sacrifice the lives of his men to forward his career made him the perfect example of a leader.